how to make play.gg servers. This tutorial is for those that couldn't get the Feather Client servers to work, which by the way, if you haven't already, make sure you check out my Feather Client videos to see a easier method of servers. But either way, you're not here to see that. You're here to know how to use play.gg. So hit download. This is for where you download your application, Windows, Linux, Mac, or a plugin for a Java server. But I'm going to stick with the Windows one. I already have it opened up here, but when you open it up for the first time, it will send you to a login page. We have to log in first. So let's log in. All right. So now we're in reopen the application. So it will send you back through here and then you should see this add new agent. A program will like to create a new agent on your account. This was most likely you because you're the one that wanted this new agent. And this is where the server will port forward your computer using one of their custom generated tunnels, which we'll get to just that in a minute. Let's hit continue and hit add agents. And so wait for play program to enter a server. The play program is set up. What next? Create the tunnel. Add tunnel. You shared IP. You'll be assigned one of the RAM, you know, IPs. Tunnel select. Let's select Minecraft Java. Enable tunnel. Let's add a tunnel. The tunnels are basically the way that your server gets out to everyone else. It will create a custom generated IP. Sometimes the names are a little interesting. So that's the IP that you have to share with everyone. And that's basically it. The way that you know that everything is so far looking good is if you see authenticated connection, you know, all this normal stuff right here. So let's download a server. So we can download the vanilla versions here. And I'm actually using a different website for this because the previous website that I used actually got taken down. But this will be linked down below. And as you can see, there's a bunch of different stable versions for the vanilla ones. Let's go with the 1.20.1. Right click on your desktop and hit new folder. Open up this folder. Locate wherever your jar file might be, the vanilla jar file. In my case, it's in the downloads folder. And then place it inside of this new folder. And then double click on this jar file. This will create the library versions and in the second here, it would also create the EULA. And the EULA, we have to change from false to true. So here it is, the EULA. Double click on this. Changes from false to true. And then we double click on the vanilla jar one more time and we should get our server. Now, in order to add more RAMs to the server, I will go over that in just a second. But as you can see, our server is up. And right now it's preparing the spawn area. So while it's doing that, let me launch up 1.20.1, copy the server IP and I launched up Minecraft, of course. And so let's join the server. As you can see, it actually worked. And as you can see, it actually worked. <laughs> it actually ran. And the Play.gg servers not only work for Java, but for Bedrock, for modded, for plugins, for both even. And it works for basically everything. If Feather Client does not work for you, this will definitely work for you if it's done correctly. And there's a lot of steps to it, so make sure to follow them correctly. But now it's time to go over how to allocate more RAM for your server. Okay, so to add RAM to your server, we have to make a batch file. But first, let's get a new text document, which in order to get a new text document, you just right click, hit new, and then go to text document. So right now I have one that says run.txt, which is the text document file. And in this, I pasted in this prompt. So now here we have this prompt right here. Hit the X button right here, hit save. And the server.jar right here, make sure to name it server.jar by the way. We're not gonna be using this to run it, we're gonna be using this run.txt. We have to rename it, at least the extension here, to a dot bat file, which will make it a runnable file. And so we double click on this. And now as you can see here, it will look for wherever the Java is and it will allocate this much RAM and you can change this RAM amount so that it would be more suitable for whatever server you're running. In this case, I only added one gigabyte of memory to this server. So you have to go in there and edit this amount right here in order to give you more RAM allocated to the server. And that's basically it. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, like if you want to subscribe, go ahead and subscribe and be top and be top. I'll see you guys next video. Take care and good.